Well, our next story is fascinating. Benjamin Ola Akande came to the United States 36 years ago from Nigeria. Today, he is the newest president of Westminster College in Fulton, Missouri, and the first African to lead the Liberal Arts College. Akande says he's honored, and this is a dream come true for him. He recently sat down with VOA's Mariama Diallo in this exclusive interview. Well, thank you, Dr. Okande, for being here. And I'm going to start by congratulating you on your new appointment. It's a pleasure. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to, um, to get a chance to, to be interviewed at a, a station that I, that I grew up listening to way back in the day. And um, I'm, um, I'm really excited to be here this morning. Westminster College is a very unique place. It is an institution that uh, over time has been very focused on, on developing leaders. And their focus on developing leaders is not just being American leaders, but also global leaders. Over 80 international students um, uh, represented uh, among our, our population, 80 countries particularly. And, and I think that was an attraction to me. And then secondly, um, it's an institution that has significant record of accomplishments. 96% of our students are placed in jobs or graduate school within six months of graduation. I, I'm, I'm big on results, and, and I think that that was, that was also very, very, very attractive to me. And then thirdly, history. Westminster College is the place that Winston Churchill, almost 70 years ago, gave the Iron Curtain speech that in essence changed the dynamics of World War II and the world following that period of time. For a small college to have such a, uh, a huge stage, and, and after Winston, we, we, Gorbachev delivered a major speech while he was still in power, in which he projected what the future of the Soviet Union will look like. We've had Ronald Reagan there. We've had distinguished world leaders, um, Margaret Thatcher. So it is, it is a place that welcomes change. I was going to touch on the 70th anniversary of Churchill's uh, speech. I think that's being celebrated next year, right, yeah, in 2016. It is, it awesome, is, it awesome. is. Uh, you talk about it being very multicultural today. Just going back, it used to be a predominantly uh, white college. Absolutely. Uh, How like, did that change? Uh, well, that, like, like most colleges uh, in the United States, at some point, there's transformation. It, it changed more so because the university found value in it. They, they found value in the fact that um, in order to enrich the experience of our students, you have to bring students from different parts of the world with different perspectives, with different backgrounds, and that that in itself creates a dynamic that aligns with what we call liberal arts education, which is sort of giving everybody bits and pieces of, of, of touch in history and, and literature and, and sciences and developing a human being to be an effective leader. We are getting ready, the U.S., uh, to hold elections uh, soon. A lot of the issues are very divisive, from gun control to climate change to religion. How do you cultivate that idea of inclusiveness? You know, how do you cultivate that in the college itself? One of the reasons why I came to this country uh, was that I was seeking a place where I could be a member of that community. And, and America afforded me that opportunity, and it's, it's been a great one. But more importantly, I wanted them to know that inclusive excellence is critical to us moving forward. And what it means is this, that we may disagree with each other, but we do so respectfully. And in fact, I, I use the term disagreement is not disrespect. And I said, but we have to be responsible for our actions. And we have to make sure that we don't offend, we don't demean or degrade individuals because they don't look like us, because they don't have the same value systems as us. And that the part of education process is that openness to new ideas and perspectives. Usually just agree to disagree. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful Basically. thing. And, 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 I, and so when you look at the current debate going on in the U.S., um, it is a debate. And at some point, that debate will be validated by, by, the, by Americans at the polls. Well, let me touch on one more thing when we talk about American politics very quickly to follow up on the, my previous question about uh, one Republican candidate recently comments uh, about banning Muslims uh, from coming uh, to the United States. I mean, you are from Nigeria yes. originally, and half yes. of that country uh, is Muslim. So what do you make of comments like that? And how do you discuss it with students? Well, it, 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 is, it is a perspective of one individual. And, and I believe that uh, Donald Trump does not speak for America, uh, the totality of this country. And again, we, we have to be able to, to give him an opportunity to be able to say his mind. But at the same time, we you know, offer him an alternative option to that. I think what we'll find as we move forward is this is going to create a debate, a conversation among Americans as to what the value system for this country is. And that indeed, if we say that we're a place that welcomes immigrants from all over the place, 
and that 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 those immigrants you know formulate the totality of what is the uniqueness of America if that's what got us here what's going to get us into the future well I would say doing what God has said has been has worked, that that sense of embracing people from different places, and, and so when you make a statement that um, the Muslims are not welcome here, I, I I think it's it's not a statement that characterizes the very essence of what America is all about.